Hey, hello everybody. Uh, we're out here on the porch again to talk about how to do some math with the significant figures that we learned about last time. So the whole point of this is that we saw in the lab a couple of days ago that you can't just get infinity digits off of a measurement, right? It's limited by what the instrument can read. So sig figs help us keep track of which numbers actually meant something from the instruments and which numbers were just kind of made up by your calculator. So in this talk and the next one we're going to do after this, what we're doing is we're trying to figure out when we do math with these measurements, with these numbers that mean something, with these significant figures, which digits do we get to keep and which digits do we have to get rid of? In other words, which numbers still mean something after our calculations and which numbers are just kind of made up by the calculator. So let's go ahead and get started talking about the rules for adding and subtracting with sig figs. Okay guys, so let's look at the first problem here we're going to talk about, and I already wrote the answer up there because this is not a lesson about how to add. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you guys already know how to do that, so um, this is not teaching you math, this is teaching you how to treat numbers that have sig figs, okay? So um, you can use your calculator, of course, you don't have to worry about doing this in your head, but I want to know if these two numbers are measurements, in other words, if they have sig figs, when I add them together, how many, how many digits can I keep in my answer? Because like we saw in the lab, you can't just add digits to numbers. They have to come from a measurement, okay? So when we add things up, we can't just have digits appear in, in, in our answer unless they mean something. So let's, let's figure this out. The rule is for adding and subtracting, it's pretty straightforward. Your answer cannot have any more decimal places then whichever input has the fewest, okay? So let's walk through that real quick. I'm going to look at my two inputs, which are the two green numbers over here, and I want to know how many decimal places does each have. So 120 has nothing after the decimal. And I'm not talking about sig fig rules here. I'm just saying how many things are after the decimal, how many numbers are after the decimal. There's none, right? So this has zero after the decimal. 10.6 has one number after the decimal, okay? And the rule is... Your answer only gets to keep the fewest, okay? The fewest things after the decimal. So zero, of course, is fewer than one. So my answer can only have zero things after the decimal, all right? Zero decimal places. So how do I change my answer over here, the number I got, to have zero decimal places? Well, what we do is we round, all right? So I know that I have to get rid of this 0.6. I have to have zero decimal places. So what I do is I say, all right, the 0.6 is going away, but before I get rid of it, I see does it round that zero up or does it not, okay? And you guys know the rules for rounding. If it's a five or greater, you round up, otherwise you don't, right? So that's what you're gonna do here. So because this is 0.6, we're gonna round that 130 up to a 131. 131 has zero decimal places which is the same as the fewest, the fewest input, 120, which has zero decimal places. So that is the correct answer, okay, with the right number of sig figs. So again, when you're adding or subtracting, your answer can only have as many decimal places as the input with the fewest decimal places. That's why we dropped off the 0.6. Let's do another one. Okay, here's another one. It's getting kind of dark out here, so we gotta hurry up. Um, again, I put the answer here. I don't care about doing the math part. Um, I just want to know how many, how many figures, how many digits can I keep in my answer, okay? So if we go through and look at our inputs, the first one over here, 460.82, has two numbers after the decimal. The second one has three numbers after the decimal. So we only get to keep the fewest, right? So two is fewer than three. Two is less than three. So how many, do, how many digits do, does our answer get to have after the decimal? It's two, it's the fewest, right? So go to the answer. We're gonna this time go to the second decimal, the second decimal place, because we get to keep two this time. So we're gonna go to that second decimal place and we're going to chop it off there and see if we have to round or see if we can round up or whatever, right? So the rules for rounding, again, if it's five or greater, you round up, otherwise you just leave it alone. The zero does not round the five up, so we just chop it off. So the answer here is gonna be 417.85 with the correct number of sig figs. Okay, one more. 
All right, last one. So this time we're subtracting. Ooh, scary. Um, it's just exactly the same, though. Same rules, okay? So the process is we, we count the number of decimal places in each input. That's super easy, right? This one has three things after the decimal. That's three. This one has two things after the decimal. That's two. You ask yourself which one's less. Okay, so two is less than three. So your answer can only keep two decimal places. So we look at the answer. We go to the second decimal place, because we're going to keep two decimal places, and then we chop it and check for rounding, right? So does one round up the eight? No, it doesn't, right? It does not round it up. So we just chop it off, and it goes away, and the answer is 6.98, okay? That's your answer with the correct number of sig figs. So should be pretty straightforward. Let's just review one more time. All right, so before it gets completely black out here, <laughs> the sun's going down real fast. Um, just to recap, when you are adding and subtracting anything in this class, you're going to have to worry about the sig fig rules. But that's okay, because the rules are easy. The rule is, your answer can only keep as many decimal places. We don't care about sig figs here, just literally the number of things after the decimal. Decimal places, as whichever input had the fewest. Okay, You can only keep the fewest decimal places. You chop it off by rounding, you don't just get rid of the number, you round and you're good to go. So that's all it is for adding and subtracting. Great job, everybody. Go ahead and take the quiz below. See how you do on it. If you don't get a good grade, what I mean like at least 90% on the quiz, then go down and do some of the practice problems in class and find some other people who need the help as well, okay? So make sure you get this stuff because we're gonna do it all year on every single math problem you do in chemistry. All right, so get started on the quiz.